Eggnog, like so many old-fashioned cocktails, is made with raw eggs. Raw eggs give cocktails some viscosity and potentially some bubbles if you shake or whip the drink. Eggnog is raw eggs, milk and or cream, sugar, and a healthy dose of brown liquor, like brandy or rum. That healthy dose of liquor is not only conducive to good holiday cheer, it might also serve to make the drink healthier, or at least less likely to have you writhing around on the floor of your bathroom all Christmas. Nobody really knows the origin of eggnog or the origin of its curious name. Written accounts of the drink first appear in 18th century Britain and America. Oxford English Dictionary says nog is an old East Anglian word for a kind of strong ale, so perhaps the drink was originally just raw egg in beer. On the other hand, nog is also a very old word referring to a kind of wooden peg. And here in the Americas, nog came to refer to a kind of wooden mug that people would drink from, I would guess because a mug is also a cylindrical shape like a peg. Also in the Americas, rum came to be referred to kind of informally as grog. So if you thickened up some rum with a raw egg, you would be drinking egg in grog, and you might serve it in a nog. Therefore, people have long argued that egg in grog in nog got squished into eggnog. But the famous linguist Ben Zimmer disagrees. He says there's just no textual evidence to support that explanation, amusing though it may be. He raises the possibility that nog might be derived from a Scottish word nug, meaning ale warmed with a hot poker. I guess if you wanted a warm drink, but you did not have a fire safe vessel, you could warm your poker in the fire and then put it into the drink and it would go tss. Anyway, eggnog evolved into the sweet, rich dairy drink that we traditionally have at Christmas. There are several recipes attributed to founding U.S. President George Washington. Historians at Mount Vernon, Washington's plantation turned museum, they say these recipes are apocryphal. They may be real vintage recipes, but they have nothing to do with Washington. Let's assume this is a real vintage recipe, however. So we've got cream, milk, sugar, brandy, rye, rum, and sherry. Separate the eggs so you can beat the whites before folding them in and then check this set in a cool place for several days lots of very old eggnog recipes tell you to age your eggnog before you drink it to age it for days or even weeks my hypothesis is this procedure might have been born of agricultural necessity in the days before climate controlled chicken coops chickens generally stopped laying eggs in the winter at least in cold climates if you wanted to preserve some eggs for the winter one option may have been to mix them with booze I have no textual evidence to support my claim here, but it is a fact that ethanol is a preservative, and people might have simply noticed that aged eggnog also tended to taste better. Hence, this eggnog recipe, which I got from a microbiologist at Rockefeller University named Dr. Vincent Fischetti. He got it from his predecessor. When I started at Rockefeller about 60 plus years ago, um, one of the traditions of, in the lab was Rebecca Lansfield was a famous scientist at the time and still passed away in, in the 80s, but as a famous scientist, uh, she would have it at, at uh, Thanksgiving time, we, she would set up um, an eggnog. She would have a home recipe and we all got together and she would make the recipe in front of all of us. And I carried on that tradition for, for, for the next 30 or 40 years. So here is Dr. Lansfield's recipe. Instead of whipping the egg whites, she just whipped the cream in order to get a froth. That's nice, that way you don't have to separate the eggs. But her first step is, quote, beat eggs, add bourbon and rum slowly with stirring to prevent precipitation of egg proteins. You can tell this was written by a microbiologist. Precipitation means denaturation of the, of the uh, egg proteins and it just falls out of solution. So it's actually just, just globs of protein. I'm gonna show you what that would look like. And instead of the rum, I'm gonna use a Everclear because it's clear so you can see what's happening. Also Everclear is 95% alcohol. So the effect is gonna be all the more dramatic. The booze chemically cooks the egg white instantly. Ethanol disrupts the surface of the egg proteins, makes them fall out of solution and unfold, tangling and bonding with each other in this big coagulated mass. Heat does the same basic thing when you cook. If you mix the booze in slowly, you still denature the proteins, but at least you stop them from flocculating together in giant clumps. 
So let's make Dr. Lansfield's recipe. It's in the description and I've scaled it down. I'm not trying to liquor up a whole department. Whip a cup of cream, 237 mils, until you've got nice peaks, but stop before it looks like cottage cheese. Grab a bigger bowl and crack in two eggs. Try not to bump the camera. Start beating those and then gradually drizzle in a cup and a half, 355 mils of any brown liquor mixture that you want. I've got a cup of rum and half a cup of rye whiskey. Dr. Fischetti thinks this step is probably important, adding the booze directly to the eggs instead of mixing it in later. If there's any bacteria in there, we're probably killing a lot of them right now in pretty short order. Once smooth, you can mix in the sugar. I like half a cup, 100 grams, but some people might like it sweeter. And then I've got another cup, 237 mils of unwhipped cream, but you can use milk instead. Last ingredient is the whipped cream. Just get that mixed in and you can see how thick this mixture is. Part of that thickness is provided by the egg proteins that we chemically cooked. Transfer that into some sealable vessel and that is it. Tastes amazing, tastes like an extremely boozy milkshake. But is there still some salmonella risk? Salmonella has been virtually eradicated from British eggs because the Brits vaccinate the chickens. We don't do that here in the United States. That said, American eggs are a lot safer nowadays than they were back in the 20th century when we had some big salmonella scares. Still, if you're gonna be serving old people or anyone who doesn't have a very good immune system, I think you should take the salmonella risk pretty seriously. And this leads us to the last line in Dr. Lansfield's recipe. Leave standing at least overnight with a lid slightly ajar in refrigerator. I assume because the nog might off gas and if you sealed this really tightly, it could explode. Anyway, she says, serve after two to three weeks in the cold. We make it to the week before Thanksgiving, um, and then we have it for Thanksgiving, and then everyone goes away for Thanksgiving recess, and we just keep it in the cold room until Christmas, and then we have it for our Christmas party. And actually, it's better at Christmas than it was at Thanksgiving. And it's probably safer after it ages. Dr. Fischetti is running a bacteriology lab there, so he's got vials of salmonella just sitting around, and one year they decided to do a little experiment. We made the recipe and we spiked it with salmonella. So we added quite a bit of salmonella to the, to the eggnog. And then we took samples, we put it away in the, in the cold room as we would do it normally. On the same day they mixed it up, there were still live salmonella in there. Then they checked after three days and the population of live salmonella was significantly reduced. They checked at three weeks and it was gone. There was no bacteria left after three weeks. Booze basically does the same thing to the bacteria that it does to the egg proteins. It denatures the membrane. The bacteria has a cell wall and a membrane and the alcohol will just denature the membrane and, and just kill the organism. So here's my freshly mixed batch. I'm just curious how stable the foam is gonna be over time, so I'm marking the level there. Here we are after three weeks in the fridge, and while the mixture has separated a bit, the level is still the same. No cream bubbles popped. That's surprisingly stable. Exactly which element of the mixture has settled to the bottom? Well, let's use a straw to take a core sample and taste the tiny bit that comes out of the straw first. Yep, that is booze, straight booze at the bottom. But the cream on top also tastes really boozy, so everything in there is in contact with alcohol, and that's good if we want to kill bacteria. I'm just shaking that to get everything homogenous again before I drink it, and as Dr. Fischetti said, the aged product tastes a lot more mellow and complex. All kinds of chemical reactions occur when alcohol mixtures age. Insanely delicious, but is it safe? Safe enough for me, I'ma drink all of this. But it's important to remember that that experiment they did at Rockefeller was not fit for scientific publication. Ideally, you would wanna repeat the experiment several times. You'd wanna maybe change up the variables a little bit, the time and the temperature. That would be the only way to prove that this is safe. You'd also wanna find the minimum amount of booze necessary to kill any salmonella, but no scientist has done that experiment yet. The Rockefeller University recipe is extremely boozy. If you age it for at least three weeks, I feel confident serving that to my guests, but you do what is safe for you and your people. A little nutmeg on top is traditional and a Merry Christmas to me.
Hey, speaking of the season of giving, the Adam Ragusea Chef Knife is again for sale at adamragusea.com. And uh, it's pretty sweet. It's the knife that I use in all of my videos and in all of my cooking at home. I love this knife. I designed it myself with the company that manufactured it. Really excellent German steel, super sharp, and all kinds of little Adam Ragusea details for the super fan in your life. We're shipping it in the United States and in these select other countries where most of my non-US audience resides. Last time we sold this knife, we sold out within a week. This time we made twice as many knives, so there's still some knives available. They're not gonna last forever though. Go to adamragusia.com and order one today. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna pop a lactase enzyme and enjoy the rest of this.